So today we're going to talk about NFTs and the impact they can have on the restaurant and just the business space in general. So Andy, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing very well, my friend. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here today. Of course, of course. Really, uh, really appreciate it. I know your, um, your time's valuable and you got a lot of stuff going on. So I appreciate you giving us a few minutes here. Absolutely. Of course. Happy to be here. Cool. Um, Andy, just for anybody who doesn't know Andy, Andy's a restaurant tour uh, based out of Los Angeles, California. Um, he's a co-founder of Bored and Hungry, the first NFT restaurant in the entire world, Food Fighters, Afters Ice Cream, various other restaurant concepts. Uh, we're really excited to have Andy on the, on the interview here today. Basically, Andy's a pioneer uh, in the Web3 world and just overall very successful businessman and restaurant owner as well. So um, Andy, again, thank you for spending a few moments here with us today. Um, hopefully I nailed that introduction. <laughs> yeah, no, that was, that was amazing words. I appreciate you. <laughs> awesome. Do you have like uh, just everybody knocking at your door trying to get interviews like this? Yeah, yeah. Every day it's, it's crazy right now. And I keep having to move things around because I'm on a here or on a plane. You know. Yeah. Well, thank you for giving us a few moments. Like I said, I really... Um, very, very genuine of you to do that. And you definitely didn't have to. So how's it going, man? Like, this is super exciting stuff. Like, oh, it's such, how's it going? It's like a life-changing experience has been for me. So it's um, learning a lot. And this, this Web3 world moves so fast. And it's crazy to see my name everywhere in Web3 because, you know, I you know, came from the food industry, but now my, my name is being tagged in, in this Web3 thing. So it's pretty yeah. exciting. Good for you, man. That's super cool. So Andy, before we go into the details of NFTs and everything, give us some background. I mean, how did, how did you get started in the restaurant space? Yeah. So before I jumped into the restaurant industry, I was, uh, I owned a streetwear clothing brand called I'm King. I did, I had that brand for a little over seven years. Uh, throughout that process, I learned a lot about, you know, branding, marketing, uh, storytelling, logistics, accounting, building a team. So all those elements that I picked up from that industry, I had this idea of opening an, an ice cream store and bringing that lifestyle culture of what I learned in apparel to the, to the food world. And at the time, no one was doing it. And I, I didn't really realize it until you know, after we opened, um, seeing how people, excited people were. But it was just a, a side project launching after ice cream. And that thing just took off and became its own monster. And from there, I just so I kept helping people along the way, launching their own concepts and finding different talent and working my way in the restaurant industry, which I had zero experience prior to that. Wow. Amazing. And so what are your thoughts on the, um, on the restaurant and the food space today with, you know, all the craziness happening in the world? It's a, it's a scary place right now. Um, I, you, you see rising food costs everywhere. You see minimum wages is, is, is up there. Um, people don't want to work in, in the food and restaurant industry anymore. So, you, you know, you, you're the, the, the talent that you have is, is not the best. And, you know, we're, we're in the people, you know, the people serving business. And if you can't provide that quality, you know, you can see everything just dwindle. And uh, it's, it's been scary to see since uh, last year until now. Yeah, totally agree. So, what like what advice would you have for i mean we can dig into some more details too but you know you're obviously in the food space and so there's there's turbulence in the food space right there's obviously always uh every market's always evolving and things are changing um uh, but over the past few years i think we've seen a lot of evolution happening in the food space and changes obviously with with all these things we're talking about so um with what you guys are doing, it's obviously something different. It's fun. It's cool. Uh, what have you seen in terms of the problems a lot of restaurant owners are facing right now around rising food costs and rising labor costs and maybe people not wanting to work and being lazy or, or whatever? Yeah. What have you seen? Because you're doing some cool stuff, have you seen a difference in that? Yeah, I think, you know, during the pandemic, you've seen a, a huge shift, right? You see over almost 100,000 restaurants have closed during this pandemic in, in mm -hmm. the U.S. alone. And and from that, I saw a grim future ahead with if you weren't 
hopping on the technology or utilizing digital marketing or social marketing that you were falling behind, right? You're not, if you weren't on the delivery apps, then you know, you're, you're just hurting your, your sales. And, but then if you're doing too much on that side, you're, you're ruining your in-store experience and people don't, you know, I think a lot of things started shifting. Yeah. Um, and I just started paying attention to, I started trying to look at different outlets and like, Hey, how do I break through this? Right. Cause if, I, if, if it, if I continue the same route for the next five years, I don't see myself in the, in the restaurant industry. So I started looking at different things and web three just happened to be one of the things that popped in my head. Um, sure. Yeah. Sure. Which actually leads me to my next question. How did you get into web three and NFTs? Yeah. A web three, uh, it's, it's been a crazy journey. Um, just like most people, I was last year, very, you know, last two years before that, I've heard NFCs, you know, everywhere, right? You can't, you can't miss that term. It was, it was just thrown around through media, uh, pop culture, you sell all over the place. And for me, it was just in one ear and out the other, just because I was so busy with opening new restaurants, managing, trying to keep, you know, trying to survive with some of them. And I just had an, a second baby at the time. So mm. I didn't have time to really dig into it. <laughs> in the same time period, I was always trying to figure out like, hey, this restaurant industry, the margins are so thin. Um, and if I had, if I had an, in maybe a little more cushion, I could develop better experiences for, for, uh, for the space and really change things around. And I always wanted to build like a deeper, more well-rounded restaurant experience, right? I'm always thinking about like, Hey, how do you, how do you take, how do you capture what Disneyland's doing into yeah. like restaurants, right? And always, mm-hmm. I'm always trying to elevate it and, and um, you know, work that way. And then, you know, just raising money in restaurant industries is not easy. You know, the, the investors are, are, are breathing down your neck and it's not that fun. And I started learning about tech, tech investments. And I saw, I learned about guys that are investing into like tens, tens and 20 different companies in a year, hundreds of millions of dollars. And if nine out of 10 of them failed, they're like, okay, I'm okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. And I was like, that would never fly in, in the industry that I'm in. Uh, and I never liked raising money and I was like, trying to marry the two together, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to do another Yelp. I was like, I'm not going to try to compete against Yelp. Um, my buddy's like, you can do what you're, you can do what you want to do with, with NFTs. And I was like, what are you talking about? And I, you know, I went down this rabbit hole of learning the industry and, and really figuring out what NFTs really meant on my end. And it was about, you know, building community, there's marketing, there's branding, there's collectability. And that, those are things that I've been doing for the past 20 years. And, um, now I've been in the web three world since November. Just seemed to make sense. Huh? The, the perfect collision of a couple different things happening in the world. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so how's it going? I mean, like I, I've seen videos of your restaurant, people, you know, lines are on the block. Um, how's business? This is great. You know, uh, we originally planned to be just a pop-up just to make a statement with the IP usage of, uh, the NFTs mm-hmm. and then it got so crazy that we decided to make it a permanent space and now we're in ex- getting ready for expansion mode and signing deals overseas which I'll probably announce in the next few months but we're, we're wow. signed a few deals already and it's going to be pretty crazy to see uh, what we do with the brand that's amazing well congratulations on that that's just super exciting in general absolutely yeah wow so you know, I bet there's a lot of restaurant owners watching this right now who are thinking, well, how do I, how do I do what you're doing? Right? Like, how do I start? What, what, what's an NFT? People are buying JPEGs for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like, you know, there's probably a lot of people out there in the world who they don't have that kind of money to throw around. So I guess like, you know, if for all the restaurant owners out there who just want to kind of get their feet wet or, you know, they want to, for all the restaurant owners who just want to want to get started in this space. Um, what would you say? Like, what's the first step? Like, I mean, they don't have to go out and buy and do everything that you're doing, but like, what are the lessons that you've learned through this, that, that anybody, no matter how big or small their, their restaurant is or how, um, how great their connections are, like what type of lessons would you say, Hey, you can implement this in your business and you don't have to drop, you know, a couple hundred, a couple hundred thousand bucks on an NFT. Of course. I, I, I think what I did first was I went down this, you know, rabbit hole of watching vid- like tons of YouTube videos, right? Watching Gary V, v videos, watching mm-hmm. other players that were jumping in the space. 
and really paying attention to the things that they were doing and why they why they were successful in, in the industry. Um, and then I, you know, started asking questions to my friends, like, how do I, you know, buy, an, how do I buy an NFT, right? Like learning these questions and different types of NFTs. And, and I learned that you don't have to buy the ones that they are the ones that cost hundreds and thousands of dollars, but they're also ones that are, are like, you can buy for 10, $11 just to, you know, just to collect something and have it. Right. And, and you can learn how to sell at the same time. I think just really immersing yourself and really learning how to do it yourself, um, and putting out what you can afford. Um, and then from there, just, you know, once you, once you fall into it and, and you get it, I think that's when you can start taking the next steps of what you want to do next. Like everyone is, most people are thinking I'm going to start my own NFT collection and it's going to make me rich. Right. And I, I think that's a really, you know, people see through that, you know, this community is a lot smarter since there's so much money involved. I, you know, the way I approached it was how, like, how do I bring value to the community? If I can bring value to this community then they would accept me. They would accept me into the community better, right? They'd be more open arms with me coming in. Um, so that's what I did. I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go buy this, buy this board ape, board ape um, character, and I'm gonna u- utilize the IP to build a restaurant space, which is something I know how, know how to do. And with this, you know, I'm building an in real life experience for the Web three community. You know, because everyone in Web three is like, okay, what? You're all, you all you have is these digital things. They're not tangible. Well, I'm building something tangible. I'm building a community space for everyone to come hang out, you know, to have, you know, talk yep. and more. And it also to the people that are very skeptical about the industry. Like I just create, this is, this just break the stigma of just being a JPEG, right? I, bu- I use this JPEG and I built a brand and a business out of it. Right. And yep. this brand business is right now changing my life. And I'm, I'm the guinea pig of this, but I, I brought value to the community to both sides. Right? I brought value to, and I'm now bridging everyone together. Really, really cool. So what I'm hearing from you is you talk about bringing people together and making this thing real. I think what you've done with, with the NFT thing, in addition to making it real for people, in addition to making like, you know, a tangible thing for people is you're giving people a reason to visit your restaurant. Like it's an extraordinary reason to go check you out and have a burger, right? Like there, there's a lot of restaurants, um, who there's a lot of, there's a lot of restaurants and there's a lot of choices in the world. There's a lot of places to eat now these days, right? Every restaurant has good, fresh food, right? There's so many different options. So I think it's, I think what you've done, and I think what a part of the lesson here is how do you stand out, right? How do you stand out from the crowd and just having fresh pizza might not be, might not be enough anymore. Um, So I think what you've done is you've just, you've given people a reason, right? You've given them a reason to say, not only I'm going to go, go check out this restaurant because um, they've got good food, but there's this buzz around you, you know, and it's, it's something that people want to be a part of. Right. I think that's really amazing that you did that. Super cool. Um, so w- where do you think this goes from here? I mean, maybe it's hard to tell, but w- how do you see the restaurant space and NFTs? What's, what's going to happen? Are you going to be the only one, you know, are people going to follow your, follow your lead there? Yeah, they're watching, they're watching, you know, I'm now, you know, I, with Bored and Hungry, that was showing people what you could do with IP. And I think with my upcoming NFT project, which is called Food Fighters Universe, I'm going to show, you know, we're going to show the world what we can do with the utility of it. Right. And I think it's going to be a great way for really talented people to crowdfund, right? That's one, one way of putting it. And another thing is also getting your community holders special perks, right? Because it's like having, it's like having the ultimate loyalty, uh, loyalty pro card program that you're buying into and investing into. And, you know, there's a lot of different offers where people can eat for free, earn rewards as they hold it, that, you know, they can get special perks and, and you can add on things along the way utilizing this blockchain technology. And um, I think that's going to really, really shift and take things to the next level. And we're like the guinea, we're basically the guinea pigs of this right now. So I don't think it's just going to affect our industry. If we're, if we can pull this off and be successful, I think it's going to really shift a lot of industries around us. Totally agree. Yeah. When you look at what's happening in the, 
in the technology space with restaurants, with like Uber Eats and DoorDash and big companies like that, who most likely will start their own ghost kitchens pretty soon, right? They have all the customer data, so there's no reason for them not to, right? Which puts a lot of restaurants in a really kind of a scary position um, to have those, you know, companies like Amazon, DoorDash, Uber Eats, like probably starting their own restaurants, right? There's a huge, huge market for restaurants. Um, and so, you know, for the, for the local restaurant owner, who's got one, two, three, five, ten 10 locations, um, you know, the, um, it's, it's, it's turbulent waters, but there's also a lot of opportunity out there. And a lot of people, a lot of restaurant owners are like, okay, well, you know, with all these things happening in the world, uh, more customers is going to solve most of the problems, right? So you, like you said, you have more of that, the margin, you have more of that padding to, uh, that leeway to do other, other things. And so, um, I wanted to ask you, like, obviously you said sales are good at Bored and Hungry. Um, but with the employee side of this, right. Um, a lot of restaurants or just businesses in general may have employee retention problem, people not showing up to interviews, people leaving. So, um, I'm sure your employees love working there because it's the hottest, coolest thing. Talk, talk to us a little bit about, you know, what the employees, the retention has been like and how that differs from maybe other businesses you've been a part of. Um, right now, just, yeah, of course, since it's the, the coolest place that everyone's talking about, of course, they're going to enjoy working there. I think with the technology of NFTs and what I've learned through it is that, you know, when, when if you have a proper collection that sells out, you'll have a lot of finance, you have a lot of cash to play with. And I think with that cash, you can utilize it to really take care and pay a healthy salary to, to your staff. You can take care of their benefits. You can create, you can create a better culture by taking, you know, just the financial side, just taking care of people, right? By finding better real estate. And I think what that would build better morale, right? Better morale within your staff because you have, you technically, you know, what I learned through watching what Gary Vee did with Fly Fish Club, like if he opens his restaurant, his Fly Fish restaurant and he doesn't, for maybe for a whole year, he doesn't even have to serve a single customer and they could still be sustainable. They could still have enough cash flow to be sustainable just, but you know, but they but they do want to be a successful restaurant at the same time, right? But I think with how the NFT world's going, the market's going, that you could be healthy enough to, to sustain and survive even without having serving customers. You can just have, you know, it's just a community space, a vehicle that's just there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so true. Yeah. I wanted to back up a little bit. Um, you mentioned your recommendation for restaurant owners and just business owners in general is, from what I heard from you, is just pay attention, right? Pay attention to people like Gary Vee when they're talking about these things because there's obviously potential there. People like that are talking about it. Um, who are like your top one, two, three, four people that you follow, you pay attention to, to stay on top of these trends? Um, I watch a lot of Gary Vee, of course, um, Bobby hundreds. Uh, he's done amazing in both the apparel field and the NFT world and community building. Uh, my buddy Jasper, who owns a brand called Fomos Mofos. Uh, I, I follow a lot of the guys that have a track record outside of the NFT world, right? Because I, mm -hmm. it's a good transition for myself because I'm in the same realm of, I've had a track record in different fields before entering this NFT space. And I'm looking, you know, the guys that I'm watching are, you know, sharing, are very transparent and sharing their history and background. And that's, those are the ones that I'm investing into and, and I'm paying attention to and learning from at the same time. Very interesting. Okay. Right now, when it comes to um, Web3 um, NFTs, where do you think this goes? Like, I think we could talk, we could talk in, in timelines, right? Like maybe we talk in one, one year time timelines, we talk in like five years and then like, you know, maybe 10 years is even too far out, but where do you think this is heading? I mean, it seems like there's a lot of potential to change everything right around currency and how business is done and ownership. Where do you think this goes? I think it's evol It's going to keep evolving right now. Right now everyone sees it as a profile picture for them to, to utilize, to flex online. But I think, <laughs> I think the technology part of it's going to be very crucial, right? As it continues to evolve, um, loyalty programs, special perks, membership clubs, 
ver verification that it's real, like those things, I think, I think all those things are going to apply to it, right? And collectability, um, there's people showing off their wallets. I think there's going to be so many different elements and endless, it's like endless on, on how this, this, these web three, like all moves around and, um, I know it's going to be fun to, to watch and I don't know, it's, it's hard to say how it moves, but it's definitely moving and every day, every day in this world, things change. So true. So true. All righty. Well, Andy, um, I wanted to thank you for, for coming on the show today. Um, obviously you've got some really exciting things going on, so we do appreciate your time. And I think in, uh, in summary, what I've, what I've taken from your conversation, cause we're, you know, um, we're trying to give restaurant owners, uh, you know, some insights into what they can do to better their business. So a couple of insights that I've learned from you on this call, um, and maybe you want to add to this as well, but number one, pay attention, right? Pay attention to what people are doing, stay up to the times, follow people like Gary Vee and everyone else who you mentioned there. Um, pay attention to what's going on because if you don't, it's so easy to slip behind. Um, second thing that I heard from you was around uh, employees and, you know, making sure that they feel like they're a part of something special. Um, obviously that, that helps for so many different reasons. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to add around some, some main takeaways that you've learned in your career so far, and especially during this NFT space, is there anything major you'd say, Hey, if I'm a restaurant owner, I would, I would focus on these three things. Uh, I think the level, just the level of impact, right? Like right now it's such a new space that everyone's paying attention. If you're going to do something that's groundbreaking and, and, and impactful, it's, it's going to spread. It's going to spread so fast, right? I've never been a, a part of a project that had this much headlines and so much feedback so fast, right? It's been so crazy for me. And that's not even, you know, before normally I've done restaurants that have you know, gotten national, but this has gotten me world coverage. Like people wow. literally around the world are listening. They're like, you know, I could, you know, I'm, if I go to an, a web, you know, web three event, I see some guys from Brazil. They're like, you're the, you're the board ape restaurant guy. You know, <laughs> it's crazy. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm literally the face of the web three food right now. And it's, 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 um, Crazy to see that level of impact in such a short amount of time because the store has technically been, only been open for a little over six weeks right now. Sure. Wow. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, there's a lot of business owners out there who maybe they can't afford a board ape, right? Um, but let's say you're a restaurant owner and you're in a town of a couple hundred thousand people. Maybe you're even in a town of 50,000 people. You know, you don't have to be in LA to make this stuff kind of blow up. Um, I'm just thinking off the top of my head. You know, there are other NFTs that people could buy that don't don't cost them an arm and a leg. And even though it's not as popular as the Bored Ape, it's still an NFT, right? Still something new and different. So I think if um, I think that could be something cool that a lot of people could, a lot of restaurant owners could try and experiment with for sure. And even accept, I think the big thing is even accepting crypto as payment, right? which is what we're doing. We're the first restaurant to accept you know, Ethereum and ApeCoin is payment, right? And that's, that's things that have never been done. And we figured out in a short amount of time how to do it. And, you know, that, that, that itself got headlines. So, you know, just, just doing something different, being innovative and trying to change things. That's what we're doing. So true. I love that. I love that. Well, Andy, um, again, thank you for, for joining us here today. If you're watching this video, thank you for watching the video. Go ahead and check out Board and Hungry. Um, go to Los Angeles pay a visit. Right. Andy, uh, you're, you're a good dude. Thank you for, for joining us here today. And next time I'm in, I'm in LA, I'm going to have to go get me a, uh, go get me a burger. <laughs> oh, I'd love to, to catch up and get, get lunch. With you. Awesome, man. Thanks for your time today. All right. See ya. Yep. Thanks. Cheers. Bye. Great weekend. You too.